Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> In case you didn't know, Laura McDonald, small business owner, friend, performer, all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, she, yeah. You own Rad Max Vintage. Yeah. I'm, well, I don't know if this is for sale because I, I now own it. <laughs> it's not for sale. I had so many <laughs> dreams of us like wearing layers of Rad Max Vintage clothing, but then you came over with these candy cane tights and I had this dress and that was where, this is where we're at. Nothing's for sale. Nothing's for sale. So check out the website. I sell vintage sports apparel. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love that humility. <laughs> Just like Buddy the Elf. That's right. What movie did we watch? We watched Elf. Ah! We did. And as you know, 12 days of Christmas movies, 12 days of friends, 12 days of food and drink pairings. And before we can even get into Elf, the 2003 classic film directed by John Favreau, 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 you know, whatever we like, mm -hmm. on HBO Max. You've seen this movie, though, we know, but join us in the North Pole. Join us in New York, in that snow globe we mm -hmm. call a city. I wish I had a snow globe. Aww. I also realize I'm, uh, when... <laughs> <laughs> what did you realize? <laughs> I don't have to get us something to drink. Oh. Because when we swallow <laughs> this, it's going to be, I don't know. Well, no, we have syrup to drink. <laughs> You're right, I'm so sorry. That noise you hear. Is sparklets. Is it sparklets? Yeah, uh, no, Arrowhead. Arrowhead! The water no one wants. I don't know anything about Arrowhead. Oh wow, thank you. Yes, we call it corporate water. Cor ooh. Yeah, <laughs> see down. Okay, so <laughs> I can't even talk about the movie because I just want I need to we, know. We need to eat this. <laughs> it tastes like it's already cold, which is <laughs> only gonna make it I even better. It's just like cold congealed. Yes, it is. Pasta. The finest pasta, uh, I think a Ralph's store brand, <laughs> and then marshmallows. We got, oh, well, syrup, obviously. Maple Anderson's uh, pure organic maple syrup. It's grade A dark color, whatever that oh means. Goodness. And then, oh yeah, those are marshmallows. And then we got M&M's, of course. Mm -hmm. We went peanut because I'm crazy. Peanut and then, butter, yeah. Peanut butter, you're right. Yeah. And then s'mores Pop-Tarts. Ah. And then we got some syrup, and I am... Andy Green has made so many comments while we were making the food about how he thinks he should be a hand model. So everything he does, and I agree, on camera his hands look beautiful, and in person. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I have huge hands, but I actually did a Sally Hansen nail polish commercial. Wow. Dang. So you have... Yeah, I'm a hand model. <laughs> you, have, you have an end to the industry. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is oh, yeah. East Side Cheesecake's finest chocolate syrup, which mm -hmm. I'm going to add just a little bit more oh for God. camera. Yes, this is another small business that was started by Julia Tokars, who uh, lives in LA. She's also an actor, writer, director in addition to making cheesecakes and chocolate syrup. And she's directing this episode, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she has no idea what she is. <laughs> there is no director, but we gotta eat, we gotta eat. Okay. Laura, <laughs> jump in, jump in. Uh, oh, hi, how are you trying to get like a full, like twisty turvy of oh, everything Yeah, you gotta it? get, it's gonna Wait, be a mess, but I'm gonna try looks and do like, it. Do you see all the red from the M&M's? Oh, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. I thought it was blood. <laughs> uh, well, okay, I can't get anything. Mmm. There's so much happening. I only got the syrup and the marshmallow. I got everything. And it was a regret. It was so good. Is it good? <laughs> Mine's cold. <laughs> we did make mine a second. Sorry. Mm-mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, it's not good, but it's satisfying a lot of things that I like. Okay, hit, hit the, tell me the boxes. It's pasta, 
I like mushy like carbs. But I don't think I like like the the bites of the chunks. I just like the fact that like the pasta is sweet. Mm. I'm starting to have one. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's a lot of chewing. Look at all the juice, by the way. You can see the <laughs> That's juice. All. That's all syrup. Different kinds of syrup here. Um, trying the to other get... problem is that I'm like hungry. This is our dinner. <laughs> this is our dinner. We are doing this. <laughs> mm. It's so sad that this is our dinner because I'm so hungry and I thought it was going to be like <laughs> satisfying. Come on and move yourself. You thought it was going to be good? I'm a child. I love food like this. Well, okay. You, you. <laughs> Thought it was good because you're Buddy the Elf. I didn't know this about you, but yeah, I but am. Elf is your favorite movie. You you had to watch this one. I, well, yeah, yeah. I, I do love Elf. I really do love Elf. Elf is great, and I also just I am like when I watch any movie, I like it to be a movie that's just gonna make me feel good. Like, oh. I don't like to watch really sad, angry movies. Ah! He's a because you're sad and angry <laughs> all other times of the mm -hmm. day, right? So movies you go to feel happy. And this is a very happy movie. <laughs> Can I reveal something? No. Um, I think I was, I must have been like a big grump when this movie came out to the point where like, I sort of was against this movie. What? I don't know how you can actually watch this movie and not just be charmed. And I, but I don't know if I actually did. I think I was just like, oh, you know, fuck it. Uh, for mm -hmm. some reason, I was just anti. I was, I was James Caan. You get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I think because I, I grew up with Rudolph, the original like stop motion thing. I think I saw that as like, hey, they're just stealing it, getting all the credit. But now I watch it, and I just love those flourishes. Yeah. And I also wonder how they didn't get sued, which is on a How Did This Get Made or whatever it is on Netflix. Netflix. The like, uh, or no, the ones like the movies that made us. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Is Elf on it? Elf is an episode. <gasps> Whoa. All the things that I say going forward will all be stolen from movies that made us <laughs> the Elf episode. Wow. Here's one factoid. The the head of the Gimbal's toy thing on his name tag, it says Wanda. Mm -hmm. And that's because Wanda Sykes was going to play that role. And they just, <laughs> and they just kept it. <laughs> What, uh, what about Buddy and this movie specifically? I mean, it's obviously the most heartwarming, I think, of all. What, the whole movie? Yeah, of all, of all but I meant, but like, why, yeah, why, why else? What, what does it... You know, I, I rewatched it this weekend to see, like, what is it about a movie that makes it, like, a Christmas classic? Like, what mm -hmm. makes this movie more so than other movies, like, something that everyone loves? Yes. I don't have the answer to that. What? <laughs> You sit on a throne of lies. I watched with a critical <laughs> autistic eye. Mm, yes, and, and what did that eye say? <laughs> that, that said, I'm so excited to try that pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I thought about all week. Oh, I'm so sad. A lot of people down south don't believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> it didn't live up to the, the hype here. And also, like, as you're we making the pasta, that's all I'm going to be talking about is this food. That's fine. Then, I think this is more important. We're making it, and he's like, okay, we'll make just like a small amount. And I was like, no, <laughs> you got to cover each plate with pasta. <laughs> It's really funny because normally that's me. <laughs> normally I'm the idiot. <laughs> normally I'm the one who's over aggressive. No. And I was like, I I don't know. But like this movie brings out the child in us, yes. right? Yes. And that's why I, I love it. And uh, but now once you have a bite of this, you kind of turn into James Conn. I don't care where you go. Okay, so here's the I things that I think that. are so important about Elf. I think it has a beautiful, heartwarming um, message. Message. It is a very light love story with Zoe Deschanel. Like, in ter light in terms of like, he's just so innocent. Like, he doesn't even know what kissing is. And it's just, and then he labels Is that what you look for in a man? No. <laughs> that was. I, well, because Lily, my partner, when watching it, she said, of all the things in this movie, that the love story was almost the most unbelievable. Because, yeah. I mean, yes, he's a sweetheart and you love him, but you yeah. don't, like, want to fuck, buddy. What? No. But like they no. do. They have babies. Eventually. Well yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not on camera, but <laughs> on yeah, it happens. Yes. Um, but I just think I mean Will Farrell is like 
commits so hard to characters like that. And like, I don't think the movie would have done nearly as well if it wasn't him. No, I think there, there's, it's one of those movies where it's so beholden to the star. Mm -hmm. And if, if you take out Will Ferrell, I'm yeah. not sure who else could fit in. I'm sure there are actors that could have gotten done an approximation, yeah. but he was the rare, like the perfect choice. Yeah. And just like this, the perfect choice. The perfect choice. Not one, like if you take one ingredient out of this plate, <laughs> it's inedible. But I'm trying to eat like mm, quarters mm. of the pasta that have less. Could you just like dry pasta? Yellow five on them. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Right. Uh. Get out of my life now! Uh, what if it was the challenge was to finish the whole play? <laughs> I think we. I'd probably get sick, to be honest. But it's one of those things. The more I talk about it, the more uncomfortable I am. <laughs> it's also like on first stage, you're not supposed to eat pasta. Like the fact that we're filming, like. <laughs> Like drool. And this is our first friend date, kind of. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh -huh. like we're breaking all the rules here. This is got to be really fun to watch, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> While we both agree that we're not sexually attracted to Buddy, sure. I don't think anyone can quibble with the sort of like finding him charming and falling in love with the him. It's yeah. really the idea of like he's... Yeah curing her sort of depression and grumpiness and right. just like, oh, I can sing in front of everyone. I'm mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you look marvelous, by the way. Me? Yeah, that's what, that's what he says to her. At oh, her I was like, I look marvelous? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I just thought it was like such a really nice thing yeah. to say on a date because like, oh, yeah. you look great. You look beautiful, but you look marvelous. I think mm -hmm. that's what he said. I think so. And I just was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he says, I mean, he's just so earnest about it. Like there's, she's so like used to everyone being so cynical and the world being so cynical. And I think that he comes in and he's just like, you are marvelous. And she's like, oh, I, I am. I forgot what it feels like to be that, right? It's like so childish, like childhood marvel. I don't know. Right, the world beats that out of us, mm -hmm. but Buddy doesn't say a single thing that he doesn't mean in the entire movie. Mm. And that's, I think, it would be nice if we could all do that going forward. I know that would be really, really hard, uh, but like, why can't we be genuine? Yeah. You know, this pasta sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at it longingly like, man, I love a, a plate full of pasta, but I don't know if I can get in there again. Laura, we can we can eat something else after, okay? <laughs> we don't have to do this. We have self-respect, maybe. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. You're gonna keep going? Okay, then I have to do it too. <laughs> I like to believe. Well, I have hope for the future. Ooh, you do? Maybe as it gets colder. <laughs> better. This is, I think it's one of those dishes like it's good yeah. as leftovers. It's like meatloaf. The, oh, the longer wow. you <laughs> reheat this puppy tomorrow. I say like eat maybe even just like cold out of the fridge and I'm like <laughs> sad and alone. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's dark. Another thing that I really loved, like the, one of the moments, which is such like a changing moment in the movie, is when the younger son, Michael, sure, runs into the office during that big like last last chance meeting for James Conn. With, with Miles Finch. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, no. Well, Miles Finch has already run away, and oh, like okay. the head of the publishing firm is like, "You have to take this movie, this meeting on Christmas Eve, or else like you're fired." What a dare. Yeah. And then they're at the meeting and the little son runs in and he's like, you have to help. We can't find Buddy. He ran away. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I can't now. I'm working. And the guy's like, get your little kid out of here. Oh, God. My impressions are spot on. <laughs> I was going to say, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. <for the> movie. <laughs> but then the little kid goes, God, Dad, you only think about yourself. Buddy thinks about everyone else. I'm like. That little part makes me so happy. Like everything he does is like, like let's celebrate other than beating up the fake Santa Clauses, which is also like very aggressive. Yeah. He's a fake! He's a fake! But like everything he does, like when he finds the world's best cup of coffee, he wants to like go back and celebrate them again and bring And his share it with the world, right? Yeah, and everyone is like, you look cute. Like he's always like saying to like, I love his little relationship with, um, with the executive assistant of oh, the Oh, yeah, Andy Sedaris' yeah, character, yeah, yeah. 
like, you look wonderful today. Like, hey, do you remember when you I just watched the movie, so if you guys don't know these references, oh, I'm well, so sorry. You no, you're fine. Them. But, um, no, I'm not going to cut anything that you said. Uh, <laughs> this is all going. Do you think I edit these? I'm trying again. Okay, we're going back in. I love, my favorite scene is the montage of him coming to New York, I think. Like, okay. there's something, uh, just, I love those movies or shows where someone, the fish out of water, but the scene, like, it reminds me of, like, Sleepy Hollow, which isn't a great <laughs> show, but it was like, Nickelodeon Crane coming to the, the, like, it's the same thing, and that always works to me, mm -hmm. you know? And it is it's still that childlike enthusiasm mm -hmm. of discovery. And, uh, yeah, I, I, and it's just funny. Mm, okay. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. The more noise I make, the better. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Actually. Is it getting better? That might have been the best bite I had. What made it the best bite? I faked it. <laughs> <laughs> With all the moons? All right, let me try. I just had to like, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, because like, I feel like my clausometer was low. <laughs> Look, can you guys see the colors on this pasta from the M&M's? It's like green, yellow, blue, red. Yeah, the M&M's are sort of melting. I guess that makes sense. The pasta was warm at some point. Mm. But I've never seen M&M's mm. look like... Mm. 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 It's better when you do that. <laughs> I actually liked that bite. <laughs> right? It's this weird mental... You just have to... Pretend to be happy. <laughs> there you... is actually, do you know that there is a, a kind of yoga called laughing yoga? Have you heard of this? No. Like you're in a group. It's like not like a full kind of class, but like it's like a, a warm up thing where you like force yourself to start laughing and then you're in a group and it turns into everyone real laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying it? <laughs> I was like, I thought you were laughing at me. <laughs> because I feel Ooh. like you're judging me, but... No, I was... That was... A, it turned into genuine laughter. <laughs> and now my chest hurts, but that might be the dress. <laughs> there are also a lot of um, quotable lines in that movie. Oh, yeah. That was right. I was quoting one right interrupting you as you did that. <laughs> Which one? The narwhal quote is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Hope you find your dad, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, and what's your favorite line? Can I tell you an embarrassing story about Elf? Oh my God, please. Okay. So one of my best friends, Jamie, who lives in Philadelphia, she met this guy named Mike and they met, I don't remember exactly how they met, but like two weeks later, she went down to Philadelphia from New York and stayed with him. And then she like came back. And, but as she came back, she sent me, I don't even think there were gifs back then or gifts, but like she sent me, Maybe like a YouTube link of Buddy the Elf coming into the dad's office and saying, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it. Right? So yes. now she's married to that guy. She's been with him for like seven years. And so like right when she sent me that like seven years ago, I was like, okay, like when I find the love of my life, I'm going to send that to her. And that's a mono. no. I've sent it to her like seven different times. Oh, no. And every time she's like, nice. She doesn't believe it anymore, but... Oh, maybe we need to find a new... A <laughs> yeah. New Sally Hansen just made finding the right match easier. But, like, but I love that optimism, because it's yeah. still... That's still Buddy coming I in. I am that, Buddy the Elf. Yeah. I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it. That scene, it's, I think, is the only problematic scene I have with Elf now. It's because it goes from, he comes in, I'm in love, I'm in love, and it's so great. And then he just proceeds to like call Peter Dinklage an elf repeatedly. And it's not funny. It's aggressively sort of mean and inappropriate. And also it sort of turns Peter Dinklage into this like caricature when he's like running on the table yeah. and getting into a fight. It felt like a cartoon. And mm -hmm. like, I didn't like that. I, I That was the only scene to me that I wish was not in it. I understand and I agree. I think that that this movie came out 18 years ago, which is crazy, don't you think? God damn it, how old are we? I was trying to think of like what, because Peter Dinklage was successful at that point. He yeah. had like a lot of power and like, I feel like he chooses roles that are like really respectable to little people and smart. Right, so I think that they were, they, 
do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like it, it like it felt like it was like the way that you feel. I yeah. agree. And I'm like, what is going through Will Ferrell's mind when he's thinking as an actor? Like, <sighs> well, I think 18 years ago, maybe they didn't have that thought. I don't yeah, know, but do I know Peter Dinklage like, must have. Right, but like, I mean, like his character is like, I don't get that this is wrong, right? Because Buddy the Elf really thinks he's an elf. Really right. thinks which sort Buddy of like really thinks that Peter Dinklage is an elf. And so like his responses are like, oh, you're telling me to call you an elf? Okay, you're an elf. And he's like, you're an angry elf, right? Like I, I guess his lines make sense, but like the whole like that scene of him like really like running and being mm -hmm. so angry, it's, I don't know. It was a little, that doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, and, well, and I don't know necessarily if Peter Dinklage had that much clout back then. I mean, uh, so like maybe it was sort of like, okay, this is a job, but I mean, it was it was something that I don't know what came first, the actor or the role, or like they really wanted mm -hmm. this like little people joke of like an elf, like wouldn't it be funny if Will mm -hmm. Ferrell mistakes a little person for an elf? It's like, it's not really funny, but it also is cool, if you take that away, it's cool that a successful children's book author mm -hmm. and sort of an asshole person, whatever, mm -hmm. is a little person. And there's like, it would be great if it just stopped it as there, Peter Dinklage is yeah. Miles Finch. Um, but I guess it was just sort of like, they just had to poke the bear, I think. Sure, but also now I'm thinking that like the other, like the mirror scene to that is how aggressive he gets about Sienna. Because mm. like these are things that he knows about the world. Yes. And then this is like a real world version of how they're not that. Mm, yeah. So like, you know, like how he's like, wait, you're not Santa. Like to him, yes. it's like there's only one Santa and Santa does bring people presents. Right. And this is a lie. And that's like the worst thing in the world, right? right. Is to lie or to pretend to be Santa. Right. Like, especially to the children. Right. So like, I understand. And that's why like, yeah, the violence is sort of a little obnoxious, <laughs> but it's more the Santa being mad and sort of being like, oh, this guy was off kilter. He should not be a Santa. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think it is sort of the same thing. He's like, his worldview is shaken completely. Right. I mean, right. he thinks he's an elf at the beginning of this movie. Right, right, right. Like, right, right and, yeah. and so, like, it's... it's, it's, it's just it's, weird. <laughs> yeah, I love that scene where it's just like, if he hasn't figured it out now, yeah. and then he's just like, what? what? And then... If he hasn't figured out he's a human by now, I don't think he ever will. Let's see. How, do we like Zoe? Do you like Zoe? Jovi? Jovi. Why, why is that name, do you think? Um, I think like jovial. Yeah. It's like yeah. her name means like joy. Yes. Right? I think that's true. But she's so... Anti-jovi. Mm hmm Until, yeah. Yeah. You did it. Oh. Arrowhead. Mmm. It is really good water. I have to say. <laughs> It, it, water has never <laughs> tasted so good in my life. We have done so much small business advertising on here. It's time to talk about another small mom and pop shop, Arrowhead Water. <laughs> <laughs> the finest uh, corporate water. Corporate water. Corporate water. Ow! Son of a nutcracker! Oh, funny thing. Uh, Mary Steen Bergen, uh, Bergen. <laughs> I, I think she's great in this movie. Me too. And so is James Caan. He's incredible as yeah. just the irascible old man. Mm -hmm. He's being James Caan. Yeah. But when James Caan comes and reveals that, hey, I have another son, she's just delighted. She's like, like wow, <laughs> that's great. And here, I also thought about your motivation, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna, what's my motivation? I think because she's so miserable in her life, She's like looking, even though she has like, they kind of like reference her having an important job somewhere. Oh yeah, as an excuse, like, no, you have to take him to work. Yeah, yeah. but like, she's so <laughs> upset in her marriage. She's like, doesn't have, it doesn't seem like an amazing relationship with her son, like a fine relationship, but everyone's like sad. And so like her response is just like, great, <laughs> I can't wait to meet him. He's gonna be the elixir, and he was actually. <laughs> she just has really good instincts. Uh, but yeah. you're so right. Like, not like, how old is this person? Why didn't you know? What's wrong with you? You're bad. Like, I've never seen that reaction from when like <laughs> no. someone comes home and is just like, well, there's another child that we have to worry about. <laughs> you know, remember Sarah Wells? What? No. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck Sarah Wells? Well, 
about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, but I really liked that. It, it sort of fits in out where everything is just like, yeah, yeah, let's accept it. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with it. And we don't care that it's weird. I like to whisper too. The, the other weird thing in this, but I also love, mm -hmm. is that all the kids watch the news. <laughs> Like a little, I have Lily, I was... give credit for that to Lily, but I was just like, yeah, what are they doing all sitting there on New Year's Eve watching ABC4 or whatever? Especially like that sweet girl who he meets in the doctor's office. She's is, like, adorable. Sitting up in her bed. Thanks, before, buddy. Before nighttime, like no one's, there are no parents around to like read her books or I don't know, just like be with her watching the news. So she's just like before bed. I like to lay back and put on my blue block. Glasses. <laughs> I watch the news. Did you ever watch the news as a child? No, I don't watch the news as an adult. Yeah, me neither. And then also like like the the biker bar. Yes. They're all silent watching the TV and it is the news. <laughs> and it's like New York One, which is like <laughs> it's not like NBC or MSNBC or, no, or Fox News. Or 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 just like it's ESPN like, well, or something which right, they actually be on at the bar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's New York One news radio. And also like I there there's like a little thing at the end where the woman who is the newscaster is like mm. Because they all see Santa fly up, the, the the cameramen don't film it. Yes. And they were basically saying that, like, they're the only camera crew that was there. People didn't have, like, phones right. at that time. So, like, no one got the footage. But all the people that they called out on the list happened to be watching that one television show. Right, exactly. And, and they all were New Yorkers, right? It's yeah. like this big book of the whole world, presumably. Yeah. But it's all just like... <laughs> yeah. But hey, that's the magic of Christmas. <laughs> Oh, that made me think of something. Yeah. On the news before that, mm -hmm. Matt Walsh shows up. Do you, uh, the yes, the yes, founder yes, of from, UCB, yes. which full circle uh -huh. is how we met in yes. UCB. And I just thought, like, I forgot that, and I just recognized it. And I was just like, oh hey, yeah. this sort of just made everything fell into place. That was the the syrup on top of this, uh the chocolate <laughs> artisan syrup. The chocolate syrup artisan syrup from Eastside Cheesecake. <laughs> Um, but yeah. yeah, and he was like hitting on the reporter. It was a really yeah. bizarre scene that like did it not need to be in there. No. But it, it's in there, you know, yeah. I'm glad it was for that connection to be like, oh, because like we haven't seen each other since then. Mm -hmm. It's been five, like, years. five years. I don't know. But yeah. yeah, I could say that for a lot of people though. It's not like, yeah. um, but this clearly was worth it. Oh, yeah. Do we have any final, I mean, I don't even know if we even talked about the movie in my head, but no, I- No, we said some things, we, We've said some things, yeah. and, we, and I think we just have to say one more time, Will Ferrell makes this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and just, and using Rudolph, I think, as the through line really does work. Cause I mean, he's a cotton-headed ninny muggins, mm -hmm. AKA a misfit, right? Like he doesn't belong here, doesn't belong anywhere. Mm -hmm. He's a, not an elf, he's not a human. Excuse me, <laughs> who knows what that was. <laughs> Oh, yum. Uh, but like that to me is always, I always love that feeling because I always, I think that's a human thing of feeling like you don't belong. Mm -hmm. But Laura, thank you for making me feel like I belong oh in your apartment. There's room for everyone on the nice list. Oh no, you're going to go in for another? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more because we gotta do it for Christmas. The closet meter is low. That is what I like about the movie. Is that even if you don't believe in Santa Claus, mm -hmm. like there is something very beautiful about the time, the holiday times that like, I know for a lot of people, holidays are really stressful, but mm -hmm. for me, like there is like a certain like, joy and spirit and giving and reconnecting with people that like December always is like lighting up trees and like everything being decorated and things being a little bit silly and lighter in the world I think it's like a beautiful thing and that's why I think that the ending of Elf makes sense it does make sense and also I I 100% agree I think Christmas was is was and is always Sorry, I was looking because a fly just landed on the uh, <laughs> the pop tart. We needed a little protein. We did need a little pasta. protein, but like it is this magical time. It was my favorite time as a kid, mm -hmm. and and it it does sort of I, I mean it does have this capitalist 
like buy shit thing that I wish it didn't. And it's more about, yeah, reconnecting, being mm -hmm. with people, dressing up, being silly, mm -hmm. eating garbage, and, uh, and just, you know, spreading the cheer, right? Mm -hmm. So I think to do that, we know how to spread cheer, Laura. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. You're making a list, checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. It cannot be Mary Steenberger. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. He knows when you're <laughs> awake. <laughs> come to your town, to your neck of this beautiful city we call Los Angeles. Yes. I don't know who calls it that. I certainly don't. Thank you for watching. Laura, thanks thank for you. watching. Thanks for coming and for thinking of me and for bringing all this beautiful food. <laughs> <laughs> blessing my home and blessing my stomach and later blessing my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I blessed that already too. And, and <laughs> yes, I don't have anything to say to that. I just have to say, bless you all. For watching, for going to this on this journey. Thank you. I will see you at the next turn of the snowflake, at the next opening of the advent calendar. And in the meantime, if uh, this, I'm doing this adventure for the LA mission. Yeah. So yeah, like we, you know, this is a nonprofit that is dedicated to eradicating homelessness in mm -hmm. LA and and I and hopefully I think beyond. Right, it's something we need in every city, everywhere. And so they are dedicated to. Uh, shelter, food, drink, healthcare, all the things clothing. that, you know, clothing that, you know, people need, that we, we as a society need and we are lacking. So please, if you can, donate. There's more information below. And in the meantime, I'll see you next episode, which is the 1984 version of A Christmas Carol. Oh. Yeah, starring George C. Scott. I don't know where it's streaming, but it's streaming somewhere. It'll be below. And yeah, that is the first of two Christmas Carol versions that we'll be doing oh, cool. this this season. And we're off! Merry Christmas! Ah! I'm not wearing pants, I forgot! <laughs>